Low-cost carrier airlines have reshaped the world of air travel. Nowadays, even a penny-pinching university student can buy a ticket for around $70 round trip and go wherever they please. Even with low-cost airlines' cheap services, full-service carriers are somehow still able to appeal to the same low-budget traveler market. But how might that be, you may ask? How have large carriers like Delta, American, and United learned to keep up with low-cost airlines in a market where price is such a major decision factor? Much of this expert revenue and cost management skills is thanks to the creation of People Express Airlines. People Express was an ultra-low-cost airline that helped introduce air travel to a new generation of flyers, ones that had very shallow pockets and liked to save money. Launched on April 30, 1981 by former Texas International Airlines executive Donald Burr, People Express began as a startup airline with three second-hand 737 aircraft from Lufthansa. They served airports mostly overlooked by larger airlines in Buffalo, Norfolk, and Columbus from their hub at Newark. The services were extremely comparable to unbundled fares on budget airlines today like Spirit or Frontier. They offered cheap economy class fares to vacation destinations and charged for amenities like checked baggage, food, and drinks. Passengers paid for their tickets on the flight to save time and were allowed one carry-on and one personal item each. Any more bags would cost $3 a piece, an equivalent of around $8 in 2020. A cup of coffee on the flight would cost just 50 cents which is around $1.30 in 2020. This no-frills service approach gave the airline a reputation as a backpack airline, since many passengers tried to save money by stuffing all their belongings into the free baggage allowance they were given and refrained from purchasing amenities. Although People Express wasn't generating as much revenue as other airlines, the key in their strategy to making money was keeping their costs as low as possible, especially labor. They managed labor costs by focusing on three things. First, much of People Express's workforce came from defunct airlines. They liked to hire airline workers and sometimes outside workers with little to no experience. Second, they structured employees' roles so that employees worked multiple jobs, something they called cross-utilization. Each worker wore many hats. Third, the airline offered salaries that were lower than other companies. Instead of higher salaries, they gave the employees stock in the company. It was actually required for an employee to own stock in the airline for them to work there, and if an employee couldn't buy any, the airline would give them a discount or take a deduction from their future pay. Little experience, broad roles, and low salaries might seem like a recipe for disaster. However, that wasn't the case. Flight crew were known for being friendly and having a positive attitude. Employees were not unionized and they also had incentives to give the airline a good image since everyone owned a small part of People Express through stock shares. The low costs enabled the airline to offer the cheapest fares in the country at the time, and increased demand for low fares led the airline to expand rapidly a few months after its start. The airline was even marketed as the cheapest means of travel, with ads claiming that flying People Express was cheaper than driving, and in a way, it was. A trip from Newark to Buffalo could cost as low as $19 on the airline, as opposed to a 6-hour drive. All seats were sold at the same price, except on flights at off-peak times. To give you an idea of how much demand there was for the airline's cheap services, when People Express started flying to Boston from its Newark hub, the number of people flying between the cities increased from 1.4 million to over 3.8 million. The airline continued to expand to many airports around the eastern United States, carefully avoiding competition from larger airlines. They also increased their fleet size by adding more second-hand 737 and 727 aircraft from Braniff Airways and Lufthansa in 1982. But People Express didn't stop there with their expansion. In May 1983, People Express took a huge step as an airline by adding long-haul service from Newark to London Gatwick with at least 747-200. A one-way ticket on this route cost as low as $149. New seating was also introduced on the 747. In addition to economy class, there was premium class, which included better seats and some extra amenities not given to economy class passengers. Tickets sold out extremely quickly with the introduction of this new route. The London flights were so popular that People Express would add more 747s to its fleet and add service to Brussels, Belgium in 1985. This aggressive, rapid expansion was benefiting the airline in the short run, with the company raking in a profit of $3.8 million in the second quarter of 1983, according to the New York Times. It was also the 10th largest airline in the United States. 
In 1984, People Express started adding big cities like Chicago, Denver, and Los Angeles into its route network. This marked a huge change in the carrier's business strategy, since they would now be directly competing with larger airlines, something they had long time avoided. Carriers like TWA, United, and American now realized that People Express was a force to be reckoned with, and if something wasn't done, People Express might put them out of business. So to combat the airline, larger carriers started to match People Express's prices. Competitors offered more flights to their hub airports not only from Newark, but also from surrounding airports like JFK and LaGuardia. This hurt People Express immensely, since passengers now had the option of either a basic fare service on People Express, or a full service experience with all amenities included on a larger airline for the same price. But despite People Express accumulating competition that was getting hard to handle, the airline continued its aggressive expansion into more big cities. In 1985, the decision was made to further increase the airline's influence by acquiring other airlines. Frontier Airlines was purchased in October, Brit Airways was bought out in December of the same year, and in early 1986, the airline acquired Provincetown Boston Airlines. This further expanded the airline's reach into the Midwest, the West Coast, and Florida. Of course, those acquisitions were not cheap. The business also became more complex with the integration of new aircraft maintenance schedules, the addition of unionized employees, and different business models. But those weren't the only issues People Express faced with the airline acquisitions. People Express acquired what were essentially full-service airlines at the time, and the airline had difficulty converting its new customers to the no-frills way of air travel. In 1986, People Express recorded a loss of $58 million. The airline had so much debt from its acquisitions and overexpansion that it was nicknamed People's Distress. In an attempt to fix its financial problems, the airline altered its strategy again by targeting business travelers. A new first class was introduced on its 747 aircraft, and People Express started domestic and transcontinental service with them shortly after its installation. A frequent flyer program was also introduced during the same time, and the airline started increasing its prices. However, it was too little too late. These efforts proved to be futile, as the pressure from mounting debts was too much for the airline. People Express finally realized that an innovative employee system and a constant expansion weren't enough to keep the airline afloat. They tried to sell Frontier to United for quick cash, but unfortunately the deal fell through, and People Express entered into its last few months of service. Frontier Airlines ceased operations in August 1986 and filed for bankruptcy. A month later, People Express was purchased by Texas Air Corporation, mainly known as Continental Airlines, for $125 million. Texas Air Corporation assumed all assets and debt of People Express. The deal was finalized on February 1, 1987, and both People Express and Frontier officially became part of Continental Airlines. Although Continental had just emerged from bankruptcy themselves, the acquisition of People Express gave them the root structure that was needed to re-establish themselves. Continental still faced many hardships, however. According to the Chicago Tribune, the addition of 300 jets with 32 different galleys and 75 seating arrangements caused crew complications. But Continental was able to successfully emerge from the merger in 1988, using People Express's aircraft and the former Newark hub to expand their operations to Europe and the East Coast. Going back and analyzing the journey of People Express, it's obvious that their overexpansion and the accumulation of massive amounts of debt from acquisitions led to their downfall. As preached by its owner Don Burr, fast growth had been the backbone to People Express's business model but perhaps they failed to account for the competition's reaction to their long-term growth. Analysts agree that People Express was doing well until it directly challenged large airlines and refused to stop its expansion even when advised to slow down. People Express then started losing customers after those decisions, and their attempt to appeal to the business market in order to survive failed as well. But how does this all relate back to larger carriers being able to keep up with today's budget airlines? Actually, People Express helped full-service airlines realize the threat that low-cost carriers imposed. When bigger airlines decided to price match People Express on their competitive routes, they invested more into revenue management programs which helped them able to make more money at lower prices and make the competition stronger. The influence from People Express is part of the reason service on legacy carriers is the way it is today. 
charging for checked bags, meals on domestic flights, and other revenue-boosting amenities. Although People Express was short-lived, they had a big impact on the industry. They were able to teach the airline market a few things about how to appeal to a new generation of flyers, the dangers of overexpansion, and how to save money on operations. But People Express's story doesn't stop there. In February 2012, there was an attempt to bring the brand of People Express back. The new airline was founded under the same name and implemented the familiar low-cost, no-frills business model. The airline based itself in Newport News, Virginia, and flew to Newark with two lease 737-400 aircraft in 2014. They eventually added more destinations, but they soon ceased operations after a few months, and the owner was even convicted of fraud from filing a false income tax return and misleading investors. The reason cited was failure to pay passenger facility charges to their Newport News Hub Airport. People Express hasn't received any revival attempts since then, but it's possible that someone could bring back the brand if they acquire the trademark. Thanks to the old People Express in the 80s, millions of passengers have been able to experience flying for the first time. They set the standard for a new era of air travel, a time where just about anyone can fly, but you'll have to pay a little extra if you want to bring your suitcase with you. Thanks for watching everyone! When researching this airline, I was surprised to discover how much influence they had and what they've taught us going forward. If any of you guys watching have ever flown People Express and would like to share your experiences, feel free to let us know down in the comments below. If you liked this video, leave a like and subscribe to Andrews Aviation. And as always, stay safe and have a wonderful day everyone!